So today I want to talk to you about uh, the direct tax code um, system. Uh, direct tax code system is going to be launched in India probably in the next couple of years. And I think it's important for all of us as citizens of India to understand what it is. Now, I was very curious about this topic, so I learned quite a bit about it and I thought it will be a good thing to share it with you all. Uh, now, the current taxation system in India in the direct uh, tax area is quite convoluted, quite complicated. And uh, the government has been proposing a, a simpler system here, which does not have too many exemptions uh, to begin with, but at the same time, the system is very easy. Uh, so let's talk about it further without any uh, delay. <coughs> and uh, this presentation has been made just after the GST implementation a couple of months ago. So I think it's the right time where after um, Mr. Modi has spoken about uh, implementation of the uh, direct taxation code in um, one of his uh, meetings that I presume in the next couple of uh, years this would be taken up and implemented in India. So, so what is direct tax code? It's a revised system of taxation with clear rules and slabs. Okay, uh, it's a system of tax which removes most of the exemptions, and uh, it's a system of uh, system of tax which sort of lowers overall tax. So we'll go through each of these and we will understand why is it so. Now the current system in, of taxation in India, this is with reference to India, is uh, is that there are certain slabs in, at every stage and there are certain exemptions, and most people don't understand it. So they typically go to the CAs, the charge the CA would charge them a hefty amount. Uh, and uh, in the process, uh, you know, he will add in some exemptions. Some places the CA would add in exemptions which are all right, you know, which he should add. But there are most of the cases what's been found is that CAs manipulate uh, the process within themselves and they, you know, file the return uh, after manipulating and submitting fake bills uh, to sort of just get tax benefit. But at the end of the day, the liability lies on the person who files the tax uh, uh, not the CA. So, CA is actually scot free in the entire process. So, this system uh, removes the onus on CAs and uh, removes the amount of flexibility that the chartered accountant, your chartered accountant will have to manipulate the system. And from your point of view, it will make it very simple. You can yourself go and ret file your returns. So, let's understand what does it entail. So, if you look at the older system, the older system has too many deductions. So, it starts off with a standard deduction, um, which goes up to about a lakh, uh, it, which includes an ATC. And the older system also has fringe benefits included. Um, so, you know, typically would have seen in offices that people get Sodexo meals and Sodexo coupons, which they go and uh, then convert into uh, cash, uh, where they go and at the point of sale, um, wherever they go and purchase stuff. Uh, now, the, these all carry a lot of administrative hassle. You have to first go and claim it and then you have to go and, you know, tick that box and say that you have claimed it. Then carry that Sodoxo pass. If you lose the pass, then again, uh, you know, you lose the cash. So, it's, it's really not a very convenient method of carrying cash around. But people use it because there's a tax exemption. Uh, home loan is an another one. Uh, now, home loan is a debatable one because you get get up to 1.5 lakh rupees of uh, home loan uh, tax benefit if you buy a house. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there has been a trend which has been seen in the US, especially after the crash of the 2008 uh, housing bubble, that people who were encouraged to buy houses by lowering the price of houses tend to leverage, over leverage themselves and buy bigger houses. Uh, houses which they can't afford or they buy multiple houses just to get the benefit of tax and by that uh, process they sort of over leverage themselves and when they uh, tend to have any financial difficulties uh, they put the house back onto the market and sell it and this creates a bubble because the, the supply of houses increases and the demand uh, goes down suddenly and this sort of created the 2008 bubble. Um, so, from from a housing loan perspective, uh, really 1.5 lakhs is not a big amount now anymore and it's no longer an incentive either, but this is kind of a false incentive, if you may. And then there are other deductions like LTA and there are several deductions which are there, 
uh, which basically add to the administrative cost of any office. Now, what has been proposed is this, so. So, what's proposed is that any uh, person who's earning, and here everybody, every citizen of this country, uh, including perhaps the citizens who are uh, not included, which are farmers, will be included in this taxation system. And uh, any taxation which is between the number, uh, you know, who whoever earns anything less than um, 3 lakhs, 1.6 to 3 lakhs. Now, that number has not been sort of uh, arrived at. So, I'm presuming the number is going to be somewhere around 3 lakhs. Uh, so, any person who earns less than 3 lakhs will not have to pay tax, which means that it removes around 90% of the population in India. Anyway, it doesn't matter which which bucket you are in, but 90% of the people don't have to worry about this. Now, for the rest of the 10%, if you're earning between 3 and 10 lakhs, that takes away again another 8% of the population. So, if you're earning between 3 and 10 lakhs, 10% would be the tax. If you're earning more than 10 lakhs, between 10 and 25 lakhs, then you'll have to pay 20 lakhs over and above the amount that uh, that you, you have already paid. So, the calculation will be, let's say you're paying you, your current salary is uh, 15 lakhs. So, you will pay 0 on zero, 0 tax on 0 to 3 lakhs. Then 3 to 10, which is 7 lakhs, you will pay 10%. It's about 70,000. And then on top of 10 lakhs, which is uh, between 10 and 15, uh, you will pay 20, uh, 20%. 20 So, on 5 lakhs, you will pay 20%, which is about a lakh. So, totally you will pay about 1.7 lakhs. You, you see, it's so easy for a person to calculate his tax just by looking at the current salary. And any person who earns more than 25 lakhs will have to pay a flat of 30%. Now, currently, these rates are at 33%, including the uh, the surcharge for anybody who, who earns more than 25 lakhs. And uh, sorry, anybody who earns more than 10 lakhs. And uh, for, uh, uh, for people who earn more than, I think, uh, 50 lakhs, the surcharge is uh, up to uh, up to 10% if I, if I remember correctly. So, effectively around 34% is the maximum tax today. So, you would see that immediately the tax rate has would be brought down through a direct system. Uh, there are some exceptions here that will be removed. So, interest you pay from housing loan cannot be exempted anymore. So, the max benefit of 1.5 lakhs will be removed. Uh, maturity amount from insurance policies, provident fund. Now, this is a contentious topic and I don't know if this will get ratified or not but any any amount that you uh, make uh, through interest uh, through the maturity amount of your provident fund will be taxed at the end of the tenure and uh, the current exemption which is called the standard deduction though that standard deduction will be removed you can uh, invest up to uh, up to 3 lakhs uh, into the the provident fund vehicle uh, to get a tax exemption. So, this is a tax exemption which will happen at source if you invest it in PF. So, it, in a way, it is, uh, you know, forcing you to move a lot of funds into Provident Fund, which will be helpful for you in the future. Because I think Provident Fund is a good method of saving money because you don't see the money in your hand and you don't spend it thus. The moment you see the Provident Fund in your hand, you sort of spend it. Uh, the other changes which are proposed is the security transaction tax. Now, this doesn't apply to a lot of people, but anybody who has dealt with the stock market pays a small amount of security transaction tax, and this will be removed. Uh, and uh, long-term capital gains. So now, long-term capital gains that uh, gains that you make when you buy, uh, buy and sell a, when you sell a property, or if you sell a land, or you you know sell a stock which is which you own for more than one year. So, in case of property and land uh, and house, you if you own something for more than uh, three years, you can claim the long-term uh, capital gains benefit where you have don't have to pay taxes. Uh, but in the case of uh, stock market, even if you hold something for more than 12 months, you can claim uh, long-term capital gains benefit there. So, it's like promoting that. Now, there is a talk that that will be removed. So, uh, from a layman's perspective, your mutual fund will be taxed. Uh, if you may, and uh, finally the perks will now be removed. So they'll so people generally sort of as I was mentioning earlier, perks like Sodexo Pass or Leave Travel Elements. These are all perks that people get uh, over and above their salary, and these are not taxed. Uh, so this is where the uh, uh, 
you know this is where corruption starts from from, from point of view because people submit fake bills if they are not traveled and people tend to use um, so dexo passes and other kind of vehicles uh, even though there is an administrative burden on the companies you know because this is simple uh, that the system is not simple uh, it forces the companies into providing such benefits at ad- added administrative cost and hassle and all of that so those things uh, perks will be now taxed they will be considered part of the income so no question asked there so the question is is it good and i would say this is good because the overall tax bracket increases so effectively you you a person who's earning let's say 10 lakhs per annum will pay less tax com- after the you know the new tax code is implemented vis a vis a person who was uh, earning 10 lakhs previously and uh, taxing the long term capital gains may be debated i don't know if the right thing or wrong thing because uh, you know these these are amounts that you've already sort of gained after legitimately uh, paying the tax and so it's like tax over tax so i don't know if the topic uh, it will be debated it should it be tax or not tax but i think overall uh, the system will, will become uh, you know overall system will become simpler and there'll be less paperwork uh so anybody who who wants to go and in you know, order file a return without the help of your chartered accountant or without sort of really going and uh, you know submitting any sort of a paper bill or or uh, fake bills you can very easily um submit your taxes and be relieved of all the um you know the stress that you might have while you pay taxes so this is this is a good system um i think uh, it will be a lot of hard work for the government uh, if it implements it uh, but if it does like the gst process it will really benefit the uh, overall um, environment and it will bring in a lot of clarity in the system so thanks very much i uh, hope you enjoyed this session uh, do not um, hesitate to put in your comments and uh, i'll look forward to hearing from you thank you